This is the team presentation for Cycle Matter for the Mike Spike simulation game. We will evaluate our overall performance for the nine rollovers with an overall of the company, a SWOT analysis, best practices, and our overall performance. Plus, we'll dive into recommendations for the future of the company. This is presented by Matthew Grado, Sydney Cobb, and Christopher McMullen. And this is for our strategic management and ethics course with Professor Michael Barr. We will first start with a little background information. The first thing we will discuss is the mission statement for Cycle Matter. We're committed to providing world-class bicycles that will inspire our riders to their own path of success. Success can be different for each person involved in the process, such as the customer, with successfully purchasing a new bicycle, or be able to bring out their best in themselves to compete at a higher level of competition, or a child getting a bike they want to ride around and have fun with their friends and family. For employees, this could be it could be truly to dedicate themselves in the cycle matter culture where they feel part of the company that they care about with their well-being and being paid a fair market, fair market value. For the shareholder's success, it is increasing the shareholder value for each year slash rollover to show they are succeeding as a company. This brings us to the vision statement, which is we're an action-oriented company dedicated to always providing bicycles that are safe and convenient for everyone, no matter what skill level the rider exceeds. We want to make sure we provide our customers with the best experience and value when choosing our products to ride to their current destination. The way this would support future goals is continuing to evolve. We know we'll, we do not have all the answers in the beginning, but we will do our research to continue to improve. We will adapt to the markets and expand over time. The strategy we will take will be more of a focused strategy. This could be a narrow niche as well as a broad wide strategy. This requires a deep understanding of customer needs. By analyzing the reports, we should be able to gain an advantage for our, over our competition. This strategy matches market characteristics, the company's competitive advantages to select markets, and the focus on the company's resources that will likely lead to desired sales volumes, revenues, and profits. Our core values for Cycle Matter are the following inspiration, innovation, authenticity, expertise, and passion. The first core value is inspiration, which means we make our riders do we make sure our riders do not settle for the for average, but rather always give it 100%. This is what we intend to do. Our second core value is innovation, which means we will continue to find ways to solve problems. We will continuously strive to listen to our customers and incorporate their ideas into our strategies. The third core value is authentic authenticity. And this simply means staying true to our customers. Expertise would be the next core value, which means we will infuse our expertise into everything we do. When customers purchase our bikes, they will see that our staff is and will be well-trained and know their products inside and out. The last core value is passion. We do not, we do what we love and we love what we do. In other words, we make products that we love. Customers will certainly reap the benefits and thus will love our products as well. So as a reminder, the SWOT analysis refers to a company's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And it is overall a useful tool in evaluating and monitoring each of these components in the internal as well as the external environment. So in a broad overview, the SWOT analysis can really help a company work towards maximizing their profit and help ensure longevity. So for Cycle Matter, the strengths include, um, but are certainly not limited to these, um, accurate product demand forecasting based on our market share in each market segment. This can really help cut costs, um, such as holding costs, especially when you're improving a product each year and having to throw away the inventory that was left over. 
The next strength includes presence in several different market segments. For example, we had presence in the kids market, commuters market, leisure market, as well as the adventurer market. And then the last strength that we have down is consistent delivery for each market that we were in um, from rollover to rollover. And then as far as weaknesses go, Cycle Matter had a more difficult time maintaining and improving quality for each of its products. And then Cycle Matter consistently had high it had a high debt equity ratio. Now, a debt equity ratio basically shows how much debt you have compared to equity. So, for Cycle Matter, our highest debt equity ratio was in 2023. Um, it was 0.64, which really signals that we have more debt than we have equity to work with. And then our lowest ratio was in um, 2021, and even then it was at 0 0.25. So overall, we have had a lot of debt compared to equity. And then lastly, we have had low plant capacity on um, each rollover, which can really prevent us from meeting our potential. The next two components of the SWOT analysis include opportunities and threats. So for Cycle Matter, the opportunities were market segments with little to no competition within them, and then also the opportunity to improve product specs for each rollover. Um, this essentially allows Cycle Matter to supply an existing product in a new and better way. So in a broad overview, kind of differentiate themselves or ourselves from other firms. And then as far as threats go, the obvious one is competition. If we look at the market summary report, it shows that Cycle Matter has consistently had a lower market share compared to the other firms in our market segments. And then lastly, the retailer margin is a big threat as it can really harm your profits because the number of stores can become smaller over each rollover. Management best practices. Our management best practices all starts with first establishing a company culture. This will start with employee morale. This means paying the employees a fair wage and making sure they receive the proper training to make our product successful. When the employee has the knowledge of the product and services, they'll be able to sell more of our bikes. Companies can reap rewards by providing training for their employees because well-trained workers help increase productivity and profits. Investing in employee training should improve worker retention rates customer satisfaction, and creativity of new product ideas. We need to listen to our associates and customers. Being a good listener is one of the easiest ways employers can start to build a positive culture. According to research gathered by Culture IQ, 86% of employees at companies with strong cultures feel their senior leadership listens to employees as compared to 70% of employees at companies without strong culture. The second management practice is staying committed. We have to stay committed to the process and that means making sure that our, we are producing bikes and increasing shareholder value. We need to make adjustments when necessary. We need to do our research and look at the reports and see if there's any trends that, that we can use for the next potential rollover. Either we adapt or we die as a company, and those little adjustments will make or break Cycle Matters business. The third management best practice would be to use quantitative data to make decisions. This is when the reports are made available to use. We used to make 
we use to make decisions for the upcoming rollovers. What we do is look for trends in the market that will help us increase our shareholder value. So the following performance objectives were taken straight from the Cycle Matter strategic plan and include reducing staff turnover rate to 5% or less, increasing sales by 30% each rollover, improving production efficiency to 0.90, improve quality to 0.80, obtain margins that are 50% of each bike segment, and then lastly, increase the shareholder value by 25% each rollover. So the following numbers are based on the last rollover. So for our staff turnover rate, we were able to reduce this down to 0.7%. As far as sales go, we were unable to increase this by 30% each rollover. However, there was consistent growth by 10 to 11 percent um, on average each rollover. For production efficiency, this was at 0.856. Quality was at 0.68. Margins, each segment was above 57 percent. More specifically, our adventurer segment was at 58 percent. Leisure was at 59 percent. Commuter was at 65% and kids was at 64%. And then lastly, our shareholder value had very inconsistent growth. In fact, I would label it very stagnant throughout the simulation. Overall, we were able to reach two of our goals out of the six and still had some success. Um, with other goals. Um, I would definitely say there's room for improvement as we did not have the best performance compared to the other groups, but overall it was good. In our strategy, we took a focus strategy, which required a deep understanding of customer needs with a goal of maximizing shareholder value. I believe we delivered on that because we paid close attention to the perceptual map that indicated what the market was looking for in our products, in both technical specs and style, and we developed each turn as needed if our products were getting too far out of line. By being focused on cost, we tried not to impact shareholder value negatively by spending unneededly, yet steadily add new products as we could afford it based on our interpretation of market readiness. Our goal was to increase our differentiation in the market by adding products based on our knowledge of our customers. We then would use data from the reports to measure the performance and effectiveness of our strategy. In order to evaluate the success of our strategy, we paid attention to these key performance indicators, keeping our goal target in mind with the intention of continued improvement each turn. The indicators we chose were turnover, sales, efficiency, quality, margins, and shareholder value. We wanted to reduce staff turnover each rollover because happy employees produce better quality products. This is also reduces cost on retraining employees as a result of high turnover. Our desired target turnover was 5%, which is much better than the Bureau of Labor Statistics reports for manufacturing. BLS.gov indicates that the turnover range for manufacturing is between 30% and 44%. With sales, the original goal was to increase sales 30% each rollover. While that may not have happened each time, it helped us keep an eye to ensure continued improvement was happening. In quality, we kept an eye on quality with the goal of driving it to 0 0.80. That was done through increased investment in training, salary, quality systems technology, and inspecting units. In margins, our goal was to keep margins at 50%. This is calculated by taking sales revenue minus cost of goods sold and dividing it by sales revenue, then multiplying it by 100. Profit margins are important to keep an eye on because it shows how much of each dollar of revenue is flowing towards the bottom line. Increasing shareholder value was one of our main goals and we chose to target 25% each rollover. By increasing shareholder value, we are giving shareholders return on their investment 
Increasing shareholder value over the long term also leads to higher stock prices and possibly higher dividends. When implementing our strategy, our focus was shareholder value, and we did not want to see it drop. Each decision we made was discussed thoroughly on a team call before each rollover. We increased investment in items that would drive quality up and help raise our efficiency standards. Again, our main focus was not to negatively impact shareholder value. We paid attention to other companies to ensure our investment in distribution support and branding was not out of line. Without stores to sell our bikes, we knew we would not meet our goals. We tried not to overspend in advertising and public relations, and when fat needed to be cut in order to reduce cost, this is where the biggest changes were made. When money mattered the most, we invested in the development of bikes, staff, quality, and branding. We paid close attention to the KPIs and adjusted as necessary. We were careful not to produce too many bikes and base production off sales projections and market share. While we may not have met our goals each rollover, we stayed focused on our strategy. As Dr. Barr stated in a feedback form, growth is still growth whether the goal was met or not. It's important to continue to stick with your strategy and provide value or to our business and its products. While our mission was to be committed to providing world-class bicycles that will inspire our riders to their own path of success, our focus on shareholder value may not have supported that as well as other indicators such as quality and sales. While it may have been somewhat misaligned, we did not stray from our strategy and implemented it well. While we may have gotten off to a slow start, compared to the competition, and we did have a couple rollovers that were negatively impacted by large investments, we did, however, double our shareholder value over the last two rollovers. We ended by increasing sales by 10%, and our efficiency was at 85.6%, and it stayed above 80% after the first two rollovers. We also ended with a turnover rate of 0.7% and a gross margin of 60%. We executed our strategy and stayed focused on growth and improvement. While we didn't hit our goals of increasing sales by 30% each rollover and adding 25% to shareholder value each year, we did improve those numbers greatly at the end. My future recommendations for Cycle Matter are to continue to grow and add SCU, develop new products, and keep current products up to date. Other than that, the company just needs to stick to the strategy and stay committed to the process because it is working. Our growth may not have been fast, but I assume from our turnover rate, our organizational health probably was. Organizational health is just as important as profits because healthy companies continuously and dramatically outperform their peers. While sales and shareholder value are great areas for companies to focus on, Cycle Matter also needs to keep organizational health just as much a priority in the future.